firstly, word on Euro 2028, first major football tournament to be held in Ireland. Um, it's brilliant for the game, isn't it? Yeah, it is brilliant for the game. Obviously, we had the, the promise of 2020, and we know how that panned out. Um, of course, it's great to get that level of football to our country. Uh, Exactly how many games? I'm not. I'm not, I'm not sure. I've been obsessed. Obviously, we're getting everything ready, but I think it's five, six games, maybe. So it'll be brilliant to to bring that level of competition to to our shores. Yeah, brilliant. And the promises off the back of that, around the investment of of grassroots funding, which we all know is is very much needed. That's my next question to you about that. The follow-on from that is that something that really needs to be, I suppose, looked at and pushed on as much as possible in this country. That there is just. Very, very little beyond what should be in Ireland for, for this huge game. Yeah, we know what's been here in this building, um, and I've been in, in both sides of it, what, what was before, old ways, old habits, and where that left us. And I think what's gone on in the last few years is consistent steps in the right direction, but we need help, obviously. We can't generate that type of funding that's needed around grassroots. League of Ireland, as we know, the constant debates, the constant need to invest, to develop our young players, because again, we all know the implications of Brexit, how that's left us. You know, we have to develop our own players, we have to take responsibility. And that will obviously come in due course, but the assistance from government grants, UEFA, FIFA, etc., is, is very much needed for, for the ongoing success and development of our, of our young players, which we're all very, very passionate about. Just talk about on the pitch now for a few minutes. Um, Kind of some of the results we look at the Greece game, obviously Greece coming up and the Netherlands and France. Among the management staff, is there an oversensing, I suppose, of the feeling you could say one of frustration? Really? Definite frustration, disappointment, obviously. You can't you can't steer it away from where you are in the group. You can't bury your head in the sand. The reality is we are where we are. I think you have to analyse the performances which we're certainly big on, the individual performance, the team performance, the preparations. For each camp and the in camp, um, and look to constantly improve. I think when you look at performances against some of the big teams, so France at home, I think we'd, we'd all agree that it was very, very good. Holland first half in particular was really, really impressed with how we how we pressed our out possession strategy. Um, possibly could have been a little bit more clinical because one one at half time wasn't a, a fair a fair scorelines, but that's where we were. And Greece, which is obviously all very prevalent in our minds as we're sat here today. It, it was a blot on the copybook that we have to accept. Um, we weren't happy with our performance at Grand Screen. Just looking ahead as we come to the end of this qualification process, I know the FAI said that they would review it at the end. Just personally, do you feel that it's hard to not think of your future? Are you left a little bit in limbo or is that just the nature of the game? I think it's just the nature of football, Will, to be honest. I think when you look at contracts, and the level of football that we are involved in as, as manager, assistant, coach and staff, etc. It's, it's just the reality of where you are. You, are, you accept, you sign a contract and, and that's, that's the reality of it. There's, there's permutations for if you qualify, if you don't qualify. Obviously we won't go into all those, but that's the reality. And then the FAI in terms of what they've said and the statement they put out after the, the whirlwind of reaction to the games last month, I thought it was very, very fair and acceptable, just cementing exactly what was signed, however long it was signed ago. So it's business as usual for us in terms of our preparation and certainly first day in on the grass today with the players, which is where we want to be, really. Eddie, just a, a one on the, on the general sort of state of the game here in the country. And when you look at the rugby team at the moment and the players who are all played at club rugby here in Ireland, that has to really help in the development of the game. I'm, I'm sure it is. Is it an impossible scenario where in, in just the way with European football is that, that can happen here in Ireland? Or would it even the same where we could get like a, a large chunk of the squad playing, playing at home, considering that you teams are starting to mm. go that way to a certain extent? Yeah, I think it's, it's, it's probably hard to copy and paste, but I, I think there's elements of it we can definitely learn from, study. I've spent time with the RFU for my own personal development. Um, and what they've done in terms of development of the provinces, the schools, is, is obviously very impressive. There's elements where we need to introduce that into our schools. You see the Gaelic do it. You know, we have to implement that in our schools and be a bit more strategic around it. We have to align everybody at grassroots, which is very, very difficult in this country, and League of Ireland, and us. So to bring that all in the straight line of where we want to go to, which is ultimately to create the best possible players we can, to give them the game time, to give them the infrastructure, to give them the expertise of 
all the coaches that we're trying to develop the levels. I think it all needs to come together. But but listen, what what the rugby have produced over a sustained period of time with the provinces in particular has been very very impressive. Then just in terms of the current uh, situation, whether or not it's the end of the road for this poor <coughs> management team, um, you must take a certain element of, of satisfaction out of the. The, the, I suppose just the squad and the unity within the squad, and the fact that you know, the fact that there's been no dissenting voices throughout, the, throughout your tenure, really, and you know, everyone still seems to be fully supportive. Yeah, I, I don't think that's in doubt. You know, I think that the players a love coming in. You see other nations where that isn't the case. The vibe is is really good around the place. The energy, the enthusiasm from the players, the desire to get better as as a group, and then go back and and individually develop at their, at their respective clubs. The desire to put the game plans into place that we introduce and we ch constantly challenge them with limited game time on the grass. So that's never been the, the issue for me at all. It's, 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 it's having to hit the levels that we need to to get results at international level with what we've put in place, the, tr the style of play, the transformation of what we've done behind the scenes to make our preparations an elite preparation for games and, and, that, and that's what it has been. So the, the, the player aspect of it in terms of where they've bought into it, I, I don't think that's ever been in doubt. And certainly from our point of view, we, we love working with this group and obviously previous groups we've had, but this group in particular, obviously it's it's a younger group than normal with injuries that we have, etc. Any further questions in the live? If not, then we'll move to the embargo section. Everything from this point onwards is embargoed to 11pm tonight.